won the toss, but they have deferred to the second half, so Eastern Michigan is going to take the ball, and back deep to receive, they have Craig Thompson in the middle, Ron Rice on the near side, John Pfeiffer on the far side. Purdue's Mike Wagner has it teed up. Almost no wind, 90 degrees, the temperature at game time. Wagner, a sophomore from Western High School, in nearby Rucheville, kicks it to the near side, and that is Ron Rice. Rice gets back to the 18-yard line, and he is set down there, deep in Eastern Michigan territory, making the stop for the Boilermakers, Trent Decatur, who stays on the field to play in the defensive alignment for Jim Coletto. Eastern Michigan comes to the line with Kwame McKinnon, a freshman redshirt quarterback from Lansing calling the signals number 17. Set behind him, Cameron Moss and James Wallace. Moss the tailback, the leading returning rusher for the Eagles. And McKinnon wants to throw on first down. He gets outside, has a first down, back to the 30, the 35, and he is run out right in front of the Purdue bench near midfield. Kwame McKinnon run out of bounds by Tank Adams, the Purdue cornerback. And the Eagles are in good shape with a first and 10 at their own 49-yard line. The rest of Eastern Michigan's offense, Pfeiffer and Chris Ninus will be the wideouts. Tim Kellogg and Brian Waldron will also, also alternate in. Patrick Walsh, a senior from Massachusetts is the tight end. He started his career at Boston College and is now a fifth-year senior at Eastern Michigan. Mike Boyle and Jeff Squibbs are the tackles. Bobby Pandelitis and Mark Paracek the tackles, and Joe Palandri the center. And he has his work cut out for him today, trying to block Jeff Scanina, Purdue's all-star nose guard. McKinnon tripped up by Dan Brecky inside the Boilermaker 40-yard line. It'll be another first down for Eastern Michigan. Purdue starts out with Frank Komet and Chris Burns, the defensive tackle, Scanina the nose, the outside linebackers Decatur and 44 Don Delvey, Jim Schwantz 48 and Brecky 49, the inside backers, and the secondary, all new faces, Adams played some last year, Pat Johnson's the free safety, Rick Smith, a veteran from two years ago, is the strong safety and Jimmy Young the corner, McKinnon to throw on first. Look, swings it out of the backfield, and running before he caught the ball was Wallace, the junior fullback from Evanston, Illinois. Second and 10, Eagles. They send two wide outs to the near side, two to the far side. An offense very similar to the run and shoot Purdue employed last year. McKinnon throws, and it's intercepted. Tipped by Moss, and Brecky looks like he may go. It's Schwartz, rather. Jim Schwartz all the way for the touchdown. The Boilermaker defense is on the board. With 13.56 to go in the quarter, Jim Schwartz picks off the tip pass and returns it all the way for a Boilermaker touchdown. to attempt the point after out of the hold of Ernest Calloway the kick is up and it is good the Boilermakers take a seven to nothing lead on the Eagles thanks to a 66 yard interception returned by Jim Schwantz They put the score up on the board. The Boilermakers with a touchdown lead, and it's still very early, and the offense hasn't even come on the field. The interception, the third of the career for Jim Schwantz. Wagner's kickoff is high and short this time. Coming down at the 14-yard line, this is Thompson. Thompson cannot get outside the containment of the Purdue pursuit. And he is taken down at the 24-yard line. Rick Smith, the strong safety, also playing on the kickoff coverage team, made the stop for the Boilermakers. 
Eastern Michigan brings it up to the line. Over the ball, Philandry, the senior center. So far, Scanina has not done much defensively against him. And on the option, McKinnon decided to keep, and the Boilermakers defensed it well as Schwantz pursued from inside, and the Palatine native brought down the Eastern Michigan quarterback after a loss of one. Pfeiffer comes wide to the near side where Jimmy Young is on him. The Boilermaker secondary playing some zone coverage this year instead of man to man. McKinnon throws out of the backfield. Moss goes down after a gain of five. Right there again is Schwantz to make the stop. Purdue's last interception return for a touchdown was Rod Woodson's 100 yard plus effort at Iowa back in 1986. McKinnon, no time. The pocket disintegrates, and he is sacked at the 21 yard line. Brecky was in there along with Decatur and Frank Komet. That sets up the punt, and getting it away quickly with a flag down on the field was Monty Kirkland. Ernest Callaway fielded the ball back at the 36 yard line. And we'll see what the flags are about. Eastern Michigan may have kicked it too quick and been uh, called for procedure. We'll wait and see. Here's the signal. The referee is John Nealon. Too many men on the field against the Boilermakers. That uh, is only a five-yard penalty, but it carries an automatic first down, so the Eastern Michigan offense is back on the field. Nealon is the ref. The umpire is Daryl Shireling, the linesman Ed Peters, the line judge Don Langlow, the field judge Bob Colburn, the side judge Terry Anderson, and the back judge today is Rich Reels. Well, now they say that it isn't an automatic first down, so they mark off the five. And Kirkland, standing back inside his own 15, will try to get it away. The Boilermakers have blocked 17 kicks in the last two years. Eastern Michigan had a field goal block or an extra point block last week. Callaway fields it at his own 31. Gets a block and cuts up field. Outruns two defenders, and he is tackled just inside Eastern Michigan territory at the 49-yard line. A great return by Ernest Callaway of 19 yards. He will stay on the field as Eric Hunter comes on with the offense. Purdue will start with a freshman, Corey Rogers, at tailback. He is the Chicago High School Player of the Year from a year ago. Earl Coleman, a fourth-year junior from Houston, Texas, the strongest back in the Purdue backfield, is the fullback. Wide to the far side, Callaway. Wide to the near side, Rodney Dennis. The tight end, Andy Oslowski, is at the top of your screen. As Hunter runs it out of the eye, off tackle, the first play, Rodgers stepped up at the line of scrimmage, and then he is not able to get away from the tackle of Fred McClendon, a senior from Flint, the leading tackler last week for Eastern Michigan. The Purdue offensive line will be Elvin Caldwell and Derek Schmidt, the tackles, Jim Wormsley and Denny Chronopolis, the guards, and Bob Dressel, the senior center. Second down and 11 for the Boilermakers on their side of midfield. The give goes to Coleman running hard, and Earl Coleman gets down to the Eagle 46-yard line, where it will be th third down now. We'll call it six. Mike Danley, the inside linebacker, made the stop for the Eagles, who have Scott Emmons, Walter Campbell, Sean Shota, and Mickey McBride up front. Shota is the anchor of that defensive front. McClendon, Danley, and David Beasley Number 92 are the linebackers. The corners are Cassie Nelson, Richard Palmer. The safety is Rice, the kickoff return man, and Kevin Tucson, the strong safety. Hunter to throw, a blitz coming. He throws, and Dennis had it and couldn't hang on as Nelson, the junior from Trotwood, Ohio's junior college, knocked him down at around the 35-yard line. Eric Brune back to punt the leading returning punter in the Big Ten, George O'Gorick over the ball, which will be snapped from the 46 of the Eagles. Back deep to receive Thompson and Pfeiffer 
for Eastern Michigan. Flag down, Bruins kick will carry deep and bound into the end zone. We'll check the flag when we come back to Ross Aid Stadium right after this. Hi, I'm Purdue cheerleader Terry Tincher here at Follett's Purdue Bookstore to tell you about Purdue's number one game day center. And I'm Purdue cheerleader Susan Singer. I come to Follett's for all the coolest Purdue items to show off my Purdue pride. If it's tailgate supplies you need for the weekend game, then look no farther than Follett's. Follett's has loads of pins, rings, and watches to reflect the Purdue image you want. If it's fashion you're after, no one can compare to Follett's for the best t-shirts, sweats, and jackets. So remember Follett's on the next game day. It's Purdue's game day center. Follett's open seven days a week. You won't want to miss the open house at Lighthouse Home Center Friday, September 6th through Sunday, September 8th. Why? To see the new 16-foot wide homes now available from $19,995. Plus factory reps on site. Five-year warranty on sectional homes. Large selection of four-bedroom sectionals in stock. Over 18 sectional show models on display. Free foundation with selected models and prizes will be given out. Don't miss it. Lighthouse Home Center's open house. Back at Ross Sage Stadium, where the Boilermakers lead Eastern Michigan 7 to nothing, thanks to Jim Schwantz's 66-yard interception return. The penalty on the Purdue punt was uh, declined. The Boilermakers had too many men on the line of scrimmage, but Eastern Michigan wisely declined to take the touchback rather than give Brune another chance to cough and corner them in a deeper hole than from the 20. On first down, the runner was the punt return man. Craig Thompson, the sophomore tailback from Cincinnati. He gains eight. It's second down two. The Eagles come to the line under the coaching of Jim Harkema, who's 38-47 and four at Eastern Michigan, but that includes a win in the California Bowl. Here's Thompson. He has the first down, a gain of five. Had across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Tripped up at the line by Frank Komet, but he fell ahead for the first down. 9.40 to go in the first quarter as the Boilermakers lead it 7 to nothing. Double wide outs to the top. Pfeiffer, the lone wide out to the near side. McKinnon pitches quickly, and Thompson drops the ball in the backfield. And then gets outside, but good pursuit as Tank Adams comes up strong from the right cornerback position to play the run well and drop Thompson for a loss of two on the play. Actually, that was Rick Smith on the tackle. Peyton Minner in now on the defensive front for the Boilermakers. McKinnon. Going to throw and hits his man. That's Brian Waldron. Second catch of the year for Waldron. And a gain on the play of roughly six yards. We'll call it third down and six since that pass came on second and 12 for the Eagles. The Boilermakers have put Minner and Craig Davison in at outside linebacker. Robert Harden also on the defensive front. McKinnon throwing on third down and a one-handed grab. Incomplete as Eric Beattie came in. He replaced Brecky at inside linebacker. He was covering. And that'll set up down a fourth, now a fourth down and six. We'll see if Eastern Michigan gets the punting unit on again. They've been working on playing games as far as uh, bringing their punting unit on at the last second. Now they're on, and Kirkland is standing inside his own 25. Callaway is standing at his own 20, and there still is no appreciable win. Callaway with a 19-yard return last time. This ball bouncing, and Kirkland gets a good roll out of it, so the Boilermakers will be bottled up at their own 15. The Boilermakers come to the line in the eye with Callaway to the far side, Dennis to the near side. Oslowski, the tight end, on the right of the formation. That's the wide side of the field, and that's the way the Boilermakers show the uh, motion, but instead, Hunter gives right up the gut, and Coleman dives ahead for three out to the 20, or out to the 18-yard line. 
They mark him in the 17, so give him a gain of two. Tedman Brown brings in the play for Purdue at the split end. He is on the left side now. On second down and eight. Hunter, a play fake. Good pursuit, but he throws, and it is caught. And Tedman Brown has a first down at the 34-yard line. The first first down of the season for the Purdue offense. And Hunter's completion makes him one for one in 91. Now Callaway comes wide to the near side, which is the wide side. Dennis is to the short side. Hunter to throw again on first down. And the pocket gets, it crumbles as Elvin Caldwell couldn't hang on to his block long enough. Coming in in pursuit, Mickey McBride, the junior nose guard from Union Lake, Michigan. The sack takes it back to the 28, where it is now second and 15 for the Purdue offense. Hunter fumbles the snap and flags fly. Here's the indication. Procedure against the Boilermakers. So that'll sec uh, set up now a second down and 20. Hunter out of the eye. Gets a good block from Coleman. And he's going to tuck it under and run. Breaks a tackle, spins back to the 28-yard line. So Hunter on the play picks up seven yards. He'll set up a third down. We'll call it 15 for Purdue. As Hunter got outside contained and made the best he could probably of a, of a difficult situation since the receivers had been covered. 5.20 to go in the quarter. The Boilermakers split the backs now behind Hunter. Eric appears to be calling off, uh, checking off at the line of scrimmage. With Brown, Calloway, and Dennis's wideouts. Hunter throws. Dennis was the intended receiver, but hanging all over him was Ronald Rice. There's your call, pass interference against the Eagles. Jim Coletto calling the plays from the Boilermaker sideline. His club has a first and 10 at its own 38, thanks to the pass interference call. Hunter to throw, lots of time, looks deep into double coverage, Dennis still goes up high, makes the catch at the 32-yard line of Eastern Michigan. Two defenders there, Nelson and Rice, but Dennis went up and made the catch. Thirty-yard pass play makes Hunter two for four for 46. And he wants a timeout with 4.32 to go in the quarter. He didn't like something he saw on the Eastern Michigan defense. After the timeout, the Boilermakers come up to the line with Brown on the near side, Callaway on the far side, and a flag. And it's going to probably go against the Boilers again. Another procedure call. So it sets it up as a first and 15 now from the Eagles 37. Hunter sends Callaway wide to the far side, Dennis wide to the near side. Still Rodgers and Coleman behind him. This is Rodgers outside, good block, cuts up behind Callaway's block and gains big yardage down inside the Eastern Michigan 30-yard line. The first big gain of Corey Rodgers' Purdue career. And it's an 11-yarder setting up now a second down. We'll call it a long four. 
Just under four minutes to go in the first quarter. The Boilermakers leading. 7-0. The Eagles show blitz. Hunter rolls outside. Breaks a tackle. One man to beat. He's going to score. Touchdown. A 27-yard touchdown run by Eric Hunter, who got outside of a blitz situation. Got a good block from his receiver. And tiptoed just inside the orange pylon on the far side. And the Boilermakers are on the board again. O'Leary, the senior from Harrison High School, is on to attempt his second point after. Callaway's hold is true. The kick is down the middle. And the Boilermakers have a 14 to nothing lead on Eastern Michigan. Hunter's 27 yard run accounts for the first offensive touchdown of the Jim Coletto era for Purdue. The drive went 84 yards. It took seven plays. The Boilermakers succeeded despite two procedure penalties. And Hunter's 27-yard run, the longest touchdown run of his career. Thompson returns it back to the 30-yard line where Smith brings him down with help from Roman Batten. You know, ironically, Hunter last year ran for more yardage than any Purdue back, but he was sacked so often that he had negative zero total yards. Wide to the far side, Tim Kellogg, a senior from Coldwater, Michigan. The tight end, Walsh, is also on the left. New fullback in the game, Bronco Vulasevic. McKinnon wants to run the option, gets outside. Good pursuit from Schwantz. Takes him down, but not after a gain of at least six yards. Jim Coletto, a great offensive strategist, showing the Purdue offense what he wants next time out. Now it's up to the defense to do the job. They've already scored a touchdown for the Boilermakers here in the first quarter, which is just under three minutes to go. Thompson can't get through. After a gain of eight on first down, Thompson loses a yard on second and two. Third and essentially three for the Eagles, who send three wideouts to the near side and the tight end left. Now Thompson, one of the wideouts, goes in motion and comes back. McKinnon dumps over the middle. Thompson has it. First down. Beattie was there to stop him. But Thompson caught the low ball and just fell ahead to the 45-yard line. That makes Eastern Michigan one of three on third down conversions. Waldron now comes wide to the bottom of your screen with Pfeiffer wide at the top and coming in motion. The pitch again. Thompson tries to get outside. Cannot do it. Tank Adams comes up to make the stop. Second down, 12. From the Eagle, 44. Tight end right. Thompson in motion. He's now the pitch man. McKinnon tucks it under, though. Keeps it into Purdue territory at the 48-yard line. Kwame McKinnon had a pretty impressive debut last week. 16 carries for 18 yards, but you have to account quarterback sacks in there. Completed 11 of 18 for 127 yards. Palandri up over the ball from Highland Park, Illinois. Scanina is on his right shoulder and has been double teamed most of the day, but that time, thanks to the double team on Scanina, the rest of the defense can pursue and throw McKinnon for the loss back into Eastern Michigan territory at the 49. 
Sets up a fourth down and six. The first quarter comes to a close. As the Boilermakers lead at 14 nothing. Eastern Michigan will have a fourth and six when we come back to start the second quarter right after this. Remember your four food groups. Now, class, for proper nutrition, we must all learn to eat from the four food groups. Repeat it with me. The four, four food food groups. Again. Now there's basic four cereal. A delicious blend of wholesome grains, delectably sweet fruits, and crunchy nuts that with milk gives you the basic goodness of the four food groups. Basic four cereal. It's the four food groups. Again. Like you've never tasted them before. Some things are ingenious but simple. Other things are ingenious but very complicated. Like your car. And your car loan, I bet. Well, if you're ready to trade in the car, trade it alone, too, for a simple interest auto loan from First Bank of Lafayette. You can get terms to fit your budget, and First Bank calculates the interest in a simple way that saves you money. Check us out first. We're First Bank of Lafayette, an equal opportunity lender, FDIC insured. If you get a severe stomach ache, where should you go? The medicine cabinet? The doctor's office. The emergency room. If you don't know, the first place you may want to go is to your phone. Hello, Ask a Nurse, may I help you? For health information or help finding a doctor, call Ask a Nurse, your source for health care answers. Welcome back to start the second quarter on the Purdue replay. Bonnie Kirkland stands just outside his own 35-yard line. To punt it to Ernest Callaway, but the Boilermakers have 10 men on the line. Kirkland's kick is a low-line drive. Callaway lets it bound out of bounds. A great kick by Kirkland back at the Purdue four-yard line. A tremendous coffin corner kick of 44 yard, 45 yards where they're going to mark it. And the Boilermakers are bottled up. Well, here's an ideal opportunity for Purdue's offensive line to prove to Coach Coletto that they can knock people off the ball. Double wide outs to the near side. Hunter gives to Rodgers, and the freshman goes up the middle and finds the running room very scarce. In fact, he's dropped maybe for a loss on the play. Oslowski comes out wide to the near side in the slot. The Boilermakers go with five down linemen. And not much running room up the middle again for Coleman. So it'll be third down now. We'll call it eight for the Boilermakers from their own six yard line. Purdue is 0 for 1 on third down conversions. Split backfield indicates a pass. Hunter waits for Callaway to get open. He is open. Hunter, by that time, had tucked it under, and he is going down and will not get the first down. By the time Callaway ran his route as the primary receiver and cut back to the ball, Hunter had already run out of the pocket, and the punting unit is coming on. Rune is six, yard deep, six yards deep in his end zone. George Ogorek is the snapper. Brune with the left foot gets it out to the 47-yard line. Pfeiffer returns for Eastern Michigan down to the 42. Davison was the first there, and he tripped him up. A five-yard return. They gave it to Waldron. He was back there as the front man in the return unit, not Pfeiffer. Here's Moss. And he is met at the line by Frank Komet, and the linebackers helped out. Waldron goes wide to the far side along with Walsh, the tight end in the slot with Pfeiffer to the near side for the Eagles. 
Fake to the fullback, quick flip. There's Walsh, the tight end. He lined up in the slot, split wide, and got about nine yards on the pass from Kwame McKinnon. The Eagles looking at a third and three now. Wide side to the bottom of your screen, and that's the way McKinnon rolls. But the pursuit is there on the option. Brecky comes into the backfield to trip him up. The Eagles have several options here. Since it's fourth and less than five, they can come to the line and try to draw the Boilers offside. Instead, the drop on the snap, and Purdue takes over. A fumbled exchange, and falling on the ball was the fullback, Wallace. But the Boilermakers able to take over as Eastern Michigan's offense sputters on fourth down. The Boilermakers taking over at their own 36-yard line send two receivers wide to the far side. Arlie Connors and Jeff Hill, the number two backfield, is in now. And on first down, Connors runs up the middle. Big first down run by Arlie Connors. Connors, the sophomore from St. Louis Lindbergh High School. Again, Brown and Callaway split wide left. From the Purdue 47, Hunter fakes to Connors, rolls out, eludes the rush, has to dump it off quickly, and the pass is incomplete, intended for Callaway. Play would have netted three yards, but Hunter was looking right down the eyeballs of the linebacker on that side for Eastern Michigan, Freddie McClendon. Makes it second and ten. Dennis wide to the near side now, and Callaway wide to the far side, and Hunter instead gives to Hill. And Jeff Hill on second down and ten runs and gains at least five down into Eastern Michigan territory to around the 47-yard line. Get a six the last play. We'll call it third down and four now for Purdue. Hunter drops in the pocket, looks, throws, Callaway went behind him. Ernest got a hand on it, but then dropped the ball. So on fourth down and four from the Eastern Michigan 47-yard line, the punting unit comes on again for Purdue. Boilermakers 0 for 3 now on third down. Brune will try to deaden the ball inside Eastern Michigan 10. This kick off the side of his foot goes out of bounds at the 22-yard line. So Brune had the right idea, but the wrong execution. He just kicked it too short. So after the Boilers had to start on their own four-yard line, Eastern Michigan starts on its own 23. New quarterback in the game now for Eastern Michigan. The starter from a year ago, Shane Jackson, a senior from Pontiac. Eastern Michigan quarterback Shane Jackson hands off to Cameron Boss. Cameron Moss, the tailback, carried. Only gained a yard. Jackson's mobility severely limited by a knee brace, his pass incomplete, intended for Kellogg and almost intercepted. Is coming up and diving for the ball was Pat Johnson. Beatty and Schwantz are Purdue's inside linebackers with Minner and Davison the outside backers. Pass over the middle and it's intercepted by Johnson this time. And he goes down to the 35-yard line. One of the problems of Jackson's career has been interceptions. He's been intercepted now 15 times. 
and thrown just seven touchdown passes. The Boilermakers take over with 9.22 to go in the half. We'll be back as Purdue takes over on the 35-yard line right after this. Cheerios has the goodness of golden honey, crushed nuts, and hearty whole grain oats. We're out to tip to tell me. Crunchy nuts and honey. It's a honey of an oh. Ow! It's honey nut Cheerios. Your Central Indiana GMC Truck and Dealers are official sponsors of the 75th anniversary celebration of our Indiana State Parks. The dealers invite you to visit an Indiana State Park in a made in Indiana GMC truck. Each member dealer has a limited supply of free passes to the parks, plus up to $1,500 in factory rebates. Come explore the quality and resale value of the GMC truck. Then explore an Indiana State Park of your choice free. Visit your Central Indiana GMC truck and dealer today. All Stouter back at Ross Age Stadium. The Boilermakers, after that big interception, throw on first down. And the pass intended for Arlie Connors, defended relatively well by Kevin Tucson, the strong safety. But Tucson had his hand on Connors' back, and the folks wanted to know if uh, the interference should have been called. Callaway's wide to the near side. The give to Connors, great block. Connors powers his way down for a gain of eight inside the 30-yard line to the 26 of Eastern Michigan before Kazzy Nelson brings him down. Second down, third down now rather, and two. Full house backfield. Connors and Coleman both in. Coleman gets the call, gets the first down to the 22. There to stop him, Bob Ostrowski, as Eastern Michigan substituting freely now on defense to try to combat the heat that has to be hotter than the 90-degree air temperature down there on the field. Double wideouts to the near side. Here's Connors, or Hill rather. Hill gets down to the 15-yard line. Callaway and Brown come wide to the near side on second and four. It's Hill and Connors in the backfield. Hill and Connors both shift up closer to the line of scrimmage. Hunter eludes the rush. Needs four for the first down, gets outside. He has the first, and he is out of bounds at the eight-yard line. Eric Hunter with another big run, and the Boilermaker rushing total is going to hit 100 yards here before halftime. Hunter's gain of eight sets the Boilers up first and goal. Here's Connors, close to the touchdown, but he didn't quite get in. They're going to mark him down around the one or maybe even inside the one. The nose of the football rests on the one-yard line. It's Connors, Coleman, and Rodgers in the backfield. Here's Earl Coleman. There is a Purdue touchdown. With 7-10 to go in the half, the Boilermakers are on the board again. O'Leary is on again. Out of Callaway is hold. And O'Leary is good again as the Boilermakers have now extended the lead to 21 to nothing. And you can see they have surpassed 100 yards rushing with seven minutes and 10 seconds yet to play here in the second quarter. Wagner's kickoffs have been high and short. But the Boilermakers, because of that hang time, have been able to get down and cover them well. This one goes to the far corner. Rice lets it bounce out of bounds at the eight-yard line. The Boilermaker drive 
for the third touchdown of the half went 35 yards in seven plays after Pat Johnson's interception. The Eagles exercising their option take the ball on the 35 yard line their own 35 rather than make Purdue kick again after Wagner kicked it out of bounds so McKinnon flips out of the backfield and there is the fullback Fulisevich the freshman from Saline Michigan his second catch of the season Six thirty-five to go as McKinnon is back at quarterback after giving way for one series to Jackson who threw the interception and now McKinnon takes a timeout. Second down call it six for the Eagles after their timeout. McKinnon to throw plenty of time the pass in traffic dropped by the tight end Walsh who we said earlier started his career at Boston College in 1987 played in a few games for the Eagles and then transferred after uh, having to sit out with an illness and now he is a fifth year senior for Jim Harkema and the Eagles of Eastern Michigan McKinnon brings them back to the line on third down and a long six from the 37 yard line that was Thompson in motion over the middle the pass caught by the tight end but he falls down short of the first down fourth down and a foot McKinnon gives to Moss and I believe he has the first down needed to get across the 35 and he did do that the ball spotted just beyond the Eastern Michigan 45 originally spotted at the 35 where this drive began after the Purdue kickoff went out of bounds on the reverse the Boilers smell it out, and Thompson goes down for a loss of one. Second down, call it 11 from the 45 now. Komet was involved in the sack. Here's the option, and this time McKinnon turns it up. He's close to another first down in Purdue territory at the 44-yard line where Schwantz horse-collared him. First and 10, Eastern Michigan. McKinnon's mobility really gives Purdue a dilemma on offense because he can run the option so well. Back to throw, batted at the line of scrimmage. McKinnon tried to catch it, and he was better off just letting it be incomplete. Had he caught it, he would have been tackled for a five-yard loss. The pass batted down by Robert Harden, the fifth-year senior from Louisville. Finally getting a chance to play regularly at Purdue. Schwantz comes through on the blitz, tackles McKinnon. He unloads. Thompson running outside. Doesn't get more than maybe three yards past the original line of scrimmage. So it sets up a third down and seven as the secondary men on that side. Jimmy Young, the corner, and Smith, the uh, free or the strong safety, came up to make the stop. On third and seven, Kellogg comes, or uh, Waldron rather, comes wide to the near side. Moss in motion. McKinnon to throw over the middle, batted up in the air. It's a free ball. Oh, Moss on the far sideline makes the catch and has the first down. A 26 yard pass play, and the ball's at the 15. Jimmy Young was alert enough to grab Moss and run him out of bounds. McKinnon runs the option, tucks it under. He takes a monstrous hit. Coming up, Rick Smith just drilled him, but a gain of three. Yeah, 
Second and seven from the 13. McKinnon to throw. Has time. Now his protection goes down. And Don Delvey sacks him back at the 26-yard line. Delvey, a first-year starter at linebacker from Liverpool, New York. A junior, number 44. It's a loss of 14. Makes it third down now and 21. McKinnon pressured again by Scanina. He runs past him twice. Still on his feet. Throws and has the fullback open but overthrows him inside the Purdue 10-yard line. Jim Langlow is on to attempt a field goal of 43 yards. His holder is, is uh, Brad Horton. Langlow, the brother of John Langlow, who kicks for Michigan State. His kick is good. So the 43-yarder gets Eastern Michigan on the board with a minute 36 left in the half. The Eagles get on the scoreboard and now we'll get to see Purdue's kickoff return unit for the first time in 1991. Jeff Hill back deep along with Corey Rogers. Langlow moves into the ball, hangs it high over on Corey Rogers' side of the field. Freshman takes it at the six. Can't find any blocking. Can't get to the wedge, actually. And he's taken down at the 19-yard line. Eastern Michigan drove 40 yards. It took him 13 plays and over five and a half minutes to get the touch or the field goal from Langlow. And they needed that big tipped pass to Moss to keep the drive alive. We'll see if the Purdue offense is content to sit on its 18-point lead or if the Boilermakers want to throw before halftime. Hunter overthrows Rodney Dennis, who was open at the 32. The Boilermakers substituting on the offensive line where Bob Martin, Nick Mamula, and Kevin Janiak are all in. Wormsley and Kronopoulos, the two guards, are still there from the starting unit. Here's Connors on the give from Hunter. Wide open, a lot of running room. All the way out to the 44-yard line where he stops the clock with a minute 19 left as he goes out of bounds. 24 yards on the carry. Arlie Connors right now with 49 yards in the first half. And running up the gut this time, it's Jeff Hill. He gains about three out across to the 47-yard line as the clock is ticking down to a minute. The Boilermakers do have two timeouts remaining. Hunter up over the ball in a spread formation. Waits, throws it out to Connors. He's dropped in his tracks almost, coming up strong to play the pass. Werner Blakely, a senior, strong safety from Detroit. So now it's third down seven. Hunter waits, waits, and he goes down and the ball is loose. And I didn't see a, an official indicate that Hunter was throwing the ball. That may be an incomplete pass. It may be a fumble. The Eagles burned their last time out with 11 seconds left after Arlie Connors recovered Hunter's fumble. So on fourth and 10, Brune is in to kick. We'll see if Eastern Michigan goes for the block. Looks like they're going to try to set up the return. Brune's kick. Coming down to Thompson at the 12-yard line, and Davidson is there to grab him along with Trent Decatur. And with two seconds left in the half, Eastern Michigan will have one opportunity to put it in play here. The 
The Eagles look like they're going to fall on it as Moss is standing back near the goal line. McKinnon runs out the clock, taking the snap and falling into the line. So the Boilermakers with the defense scoring a touchdown, setting up the offense with another interception. The offense driving 84 yards, have uh, three touchdowns, and Eastern Michigan has the field goal. It's 21-3 at half. We'll be back and look at some of the first half statistics in a little more detail right after this. JR, let's go over that checklist for that year-end closeout sale. Okay. Monthly payments as low as $133. Check. Financing as low as 2.9 APR. Check. Rebates up to $2,000. Check. Special incentives on Hondas, Toyotas, Jeeps, Eagles, Lincolns, Mercury's, Subarus, Hyundais, and Mitsubishis. Plus savings up to $6,000. $6,000? Did I authorize that? Check. When purchasing office supplies for your business, are you getting the most for your dollar from those discount catalogs or flyers? Hi, I'm Pat Smith at Smith Office Equipment, giving our customers the best price is only one of our major concerns. We also feel that offering quality products and personal professional service have been key factors to our success. We've served the community for over 35 years and we've grown to meet the needs of a thriving business market. With over 8,000 items in stock, we're definitely one-stop shopping for all your office needs. Produce captains come back out on the field as we are at halftime. The Boilermakers leading 21 to three scored first just over two minutes into the game. Well, actually over a minute into the game. Jim Schwantz intercepting Kwame McKinnon's pass, returning at 66 yard for a touchdown. Joe O'Leary's kick made it 7-0, 13.56 to go in the first quarter. And Eric Hunter then ran 27 yards to cap a seven-play 84-yard drive to make it 14-0 at 4-11 of the first. And with just 2.12 remaining before halftime, a seven-play 35-yard drive after a Pat Johnson interception, Earl Coleman went in from the one, and it was 21-0. And then with 5.34 to go in the half, a 43-yard Langlow field goal made it 21-3. Purdue leading Eastern Michigan. Rushing yardage, Purdue with 125. The visiting Eagles with 62. Passing yardage. Purdue with 47, the Eagles with 63. So total yards, Purdue a big edge, 172 to 125. Hunter is three of eight in the passing department, while McKinnon is six of 14. The interception that uh, set up the second or the third Purdue touchdown was thrown by Shane Jackson, who entered, entered uh, entered the lineup for one series. Individually, Arlie Connors, four carries for 49 yards for Purdue. And Eric Brune has kicked four times for 38 yards in the average. Monty Kirkland, three punts for 46 yards. So the Boilermakers will have their option to receive as we start the second half. We'll be back with the second half kickoff as Purdue leads Eastern Michigan 21-3 at halftime. Remember your four food groups. Today, we know to ensure good nutrition, we should eat from the four food groups. The four food groups. The four food groups. Now there's Basic Four Cereal, a delicious blend of wholesome grains, delectably sweet fruits, and crunchy nuts that, with milk, gives you the basic goodness of the four food groups. Basic Four Cereal. It's the four food groups. Like you've never tasted them before. Your Central Indiana GMC truck and dealers are official sponsors of the 75th anniversary celebration of our Indiana State Parks. The dealers invite you to visit an Indiana State Park in a made in Indiana GMC truck. Each member dealer has a limited supply of free passes to the parks, plus up to $1,500 in factory rebates. Come explore the quality and resale value of the GMC truck. Then explore an Indiana State Park of your choice free. Visit your Central Indiana GMC truck and dealer today. Cash jackpot's a million dollars bigger this week. Yeah. Don't you want to play? I like to wait till it's big. Hey, the darn thing's worth at least a million dollars every week. That means it's big every week. Mm. Okay, mister, I don't need a million dollars. Think what that money can buy for you. A vacation, a new car, a cabin at the lake. Why wait? A million's a lot of money. Look, if I played Lotto Cash, will you be quiet? Sure. Great. That's worth a million right there. Oh, very funny. Lotto Cash is an awful lot of money. 
Coleman and Hill are back deep to receive Langlow's kickoff as we start the second half. Purdue leading the game 21 to 3. This is Paul Stouter. Thanks for joining us here on the Purdue replay. Langlow has it teed up at his own 35, moves into the ball. A high kick headed for Coleman on the seven yard line. Earl looks for blocking. Can't find much and returns it to the 20 where the offense will start. First and 10. Hunter up to the line. Dressel over the ball. Oslowski the tight end left. Double wide outs wide to the near side, the wide side of the field. Here's Corey Rogers. Breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage and fights his way ahead to the 22-yard line. He's taken down on the play for Eastern Michigan by number 90, Scott Dolphy. Now Callaway comes wide to the near side. Tedman Brown wide to the far. Hunter a play fake. Rolling and he's in trouble and he goes down. All the way back at the 12-yard line in making the stop. Ed Wabarocha, a sophomore from Milwaukee. Third down, we'll call it 19 for Purdue. Hunter gives on the draw. Coleman cuts outside by a block, still on his feet, using his blockers well, but he only gets six yards. And the punting unit will have to come on as the offensive breakdown on second down in the passing situation allowed Hunter to get sacked. Rune stands inside his own five. The Eagles put nine on the line. Brune gets it away. Wobbly kick coming down in front of the Purdue bench, and it's downed in Purdue territory at the 47-yard line. Out on the far side now as the Eagles put it in play with a full house wishbone. One wide out. The give. Into the line, Cameron Moss off the right side. A gain on the play of about a yard, maybe two. Will be interesting to see now how the Boilermakers cope with his wishbone attack. Two wide outs go in motion now, and they shift formation to a triple wide out right on second and eight. McKinnon to throw with time. Now he's losing time. Peyton Minner was on him, and he threw it away. The Eagles bring it up, two and two for nine on third down conversions. This is a third and eight situation. McKinnon fakes, nearly had it intercepted. Two Boilermakers were standing around James Wallace, the fullback. Minner and Schwantz were both there. The line of scrimmage, the Purdue 45, and Kirkland will kick it from there. High kick, Callaway's gonna let it go into the end zone. And it's there on a bounce, and the Boilermakers on the touchback will start from the 20 again. Eleven fifty to go here in the third quarter. The Boilermakers stopped on their first possession of the second half. Now put it in play from their own 20. Full house backfield. Rogers off the right side out to the 23 yard line goes the freshman. Now it's back to the eye with Hill behind Coleman. Dennis and Callaway the wideouts on second and seven. Hunter up the middle. Hill, big hole, still on his feet, out to the 37 yard line. Grabbed from behind by Sean Williams, a sophomore from Cincinnati. Okay, 
Now the wide outs are to the top of your screen. It's Tedman Brown split wide and Callaway closest to the formation. Hill again. This time he's tripped at the line of scrimmage and brought down. Making the stop, 54, Chris Parenti, a senior from Westland, Ohio, Westland, Michigan. Looking at second and eight now, the Boilermakers still employing the eye. And with one of the Eastern Michigan players in the neutral zone, Dressel snapped it, Hunter took off with it. We'll see what the call's going to be. Offside against the Eagles. And there, a fifth-year senior, Bob Dressel, snapped the ball when he was aware that the Eastern Michigan defensive right end had crossed the line of scrimmage. Lou brings the ball up on second and four now after the penalty. And Earl Coleman dives ahead and he will be short of the first down, but not by much. Probably less than a yard will be the distance Purdue will have to navigate on third down. Freshman Scott Green brings in the play, lines up as a tight end on the left side. Full house backfield, double tight end set for the Boilers. Hunter gives to Coleman. Behind good blocking Earl Coleman. The fullback goes up to the 48-yard line at least. That's plenty for a first down. They're going to mark him just short of the 49. Dennis to the far side and Callaway to the near. Hunter wants to throw. Callaway on the slant. As Eric is dumped, he read blitz and got it away just before he was hammered by Walter Campbell. Hunter appears to be checking off at the line now on second and 10. Long count. Hill off right tackle, good blocking. He's, get, he's outside. Jeff Hill got one block, a good seal on the far side. Wormsley pulled out and made the block that sprung Hill. And a big gain down to the Eagles. 27, 28 yard line they're gonna spot him. 23 yards on the gain by a hill. Ron Rice, the freshman from Detroit, ran him out of bounds. Tight end right for the Boilers. First and 10 from the 28. Coleman can't get much. Big 79 had him wrapped up. Sean Williams at the line of scrimmage. Second down, nine. Double wideouts near side. Hunter in trouble again. Rolling, throwing, caught. Dennis was out of bounds, though, at the 20-yard line. Run out by the punter, Monty Kirkland, who doubles as a defensive back. Kirkland, a sophomore from North Fort Myers, Florida. Play of the Purdue drive that started on the Boilermaker 20. Third down and nine from the 27. Hunter pitches back on the option to Arlie Connors. And Arlie Connors has the first down. He's run out of bounds at the 14 yard line. The Boilers convert on third down for the second time in this drive. Here's Hill. Still on his feet. It looked like Hill was tackled by Denny Kronopoulos, who was sustaining his block downfield. And Hill wriggled away from the tackle. He comes off. He's going to get a rest, and he deserves it. 
as two freshmen enter the Purdue lineup. Corey Rogers, the starting tailback, and Scott Green, number 87, who comes in at tight end. Hill has 60. Hill has 60 yards now. Full house backfield again for Purdue. Double tight end set. Second down three from the seven yard line. Connors, close to the touchdown. Three Eagles dropped him on the two. It'll be first and goal, Boilers, from there. Marley Connors now has six carries for 68 yards. Off the right side, trying to get into the end zone, but not finding the room. The freshman, Corey Rogers. Good penetration by the defensive front of the Eastern Michigan goal line set. Number five, the safety, Ronald Rice, came up on the line in run support. Second and goal now to three. Coleman, Connors, and Corey Rogers, the backfield, behind Eric Hunter. This is Coleman. No, this is Rogers, rather. Rogers didn't get in. Again, he was down inside the one. Now it's third and goal, Purdue. On third down, it's Rogers over the top. He's in. The freshman scores his first touchdown in the old gold and black, and the Boilers are on the board again. It's 27 to three with O'Leary coming on for the point after. O'Leary has been perfect. Four for four is what he's looking for now. And he nails it. With 5.34 to go in the third quarter, Purdue drives 80 yards for another touchdown on the ground, 28 to three, and we'll be back with the Boilers kickoff right after this. All new for 1992. So right now you can come in and get a 92 Oldsmobile out and save thousands on these special PGA cars. The power windows, power locks, power seat, tilt wheel, cruise control, tinted glass, air conditioning, cassette radio, and brakes. Beautiful car. Drives like a dream. Save thousands on these low mileage special events PGA cars at Bill Andrews Oldsmobile, State Road 38 East Lafayette. Take the 50 most popular cereals in America. What if you had to choose between them based solely on the side panels? No brand names, no fancy packages, just the plain and simple facts. You'd find only one is low in sugar and a good source of fiber and made from whole grain oats. Cheerios. Compare the side panels and see for yourself. The choice is Cheerios. Paul Stouter back at Ross H Stadium. Jim Coletto implementing the rushing offense. The Purdue Boilermakers drove 80 yards in 15 plays, all on the ground. They now have 198 total rushing yards in the game. Wagner's kickoff, another high short one. Coming down to Thompson at the 20. Has some white shirts in front of him. But closing the gap and coming in to knife underneath and make the stop for the Boilermakers was, looked like number 90, Mike Walker, the outside linebacker. Pfeiffer comes wide to the near side, double wide outs to the far side. One of them is the tight end, Walsh. Waldron the other from the eye. The Eagles gonna have to put it up here to get back in this game if they're thinking that way. A fumble! The Boilers are on it! Moss fumbled in the backfield. And who recovered it? Scanina. Jim Schwantz forced the fumble. The Boilermakers with the play clock running down to two. Hunter gives to Rodgers. The freshman off left tackle gets down inside the 20.
from the eye. Rogers behind Arlie Connors. Callaway and Dennis, the wide outs to the wide side. Hunter to throw. There is Tedman Brown, rather. Tedman Brown in the game for Dennis at the split end makes the catch, and he is knocked down inside the 10 at the 8, where it will be first and goal Purdue once more. Purdue is back in the full house backfield of the double tight end set. 4.20 to go in the third quarter. Purdue looking for its fifth touchdown. The fake and Hunter's in. A great fake by Arlie Connors. Connors went up over the top. The defense bit. And Hunter waltzed into the end zone for his second touchdown of the day. The defense has set up two touchdowns and scored a third. And the running game is coming around. Just as new coach Jim Coletto hoped and planned that it would. O'Leary's kick is good. The Boilermakers are on top 35 to 3. And still continue to pound it at Eastern Michigan on the ground. You can see the Boilers with 210 rushing yards and just 59 through the air. Wagner ready to kick off again. The Purdue drive 24 yards in three plays. 53 seconds off the clock. Hunter ran it in, his second touchdown of the day. The kickoff on the far sideline. Taken by Rice. Run out up around the 30-yard line. Kellogg goes to the far side. Pfeiffer to the near. Belisevic, the lone back behind Kwame McKinnon. Going to throw it. Wide open on the far side. It's Thompson. He's out of bounds. Doesn't have a first down. He gained six on the play, though. Four minutes to go in the third. McKinnon to drop, second and four. The pass is intercepted, went through the hands of the receiver, and there goes Tank Adams. He's down inside the 10-yard line. The fourth turnover by the defense today. George O'Gorick is now in the ball game for Purdue at quarterback. And he rolls, and he's going to throw it on first down, and he overthrows Earl Coleman out of the backfield. So O'Gorick, who was going to come in only if the score got lopsided in the first couple games because the normal backup, Scott Hoffman, was injured, came in and, and aired it out on his first play. Hunter was 4 of 11 for 59 yards while he was in there. O'Gorick going to throw it again. This time he finds the man, Jeff Hill. And Hill is down at the two-yard line. Third down goal now at the two after the seven-yard completion. O'Gorick gives to Coleman. He spins and scores his second touchdown of the day. O'Leary on again for the kick. He's been perfect. Right down the middle six straight times and the boilers with 311 now to go in the third quarter have up the lead to 42 to 3 that drive just took three plays nine yards after the interception by tank adams
Last time the Boilermakers intercepted three passes in a game was the 89 opener against Miami of Ohio. Another Mid-America Conference team. Wagner's kick this time is a low line drive fielded by Rice at his 18. Little bit of running room and he loses the football. Did he get it back? Looks like he did out around the 37 yard line. Four turnovers in the game for Eastern Michigan. McKinnon still at quarterback. And he's going to throw. Good drop. Throws over the middle and Pfeiffer. The split end has it. We've got a flag. Looks like it might be a late hit on the Boilermakers. In Purdue territory at the 48. Personal foul of unnecessary roughness against the Boilers, who have made wholesale substitutions on the defense. They give up the middle. And Velisovic gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all. In there to make the stop for the Boilermakers was 91 Robert Harden, along with 98 John Sikora. Purdue with a nickel package, five defensive backs in the game. Corey Walden in now, replacing one of the outside linebackers. McKinnon to throw. Now decides to run it. He's past the line of scrimmage, and he's hit hard. Driven back. Good stick made by Rick Smith, who is still playing strong safety. Scanina, Komet, and Burns now return on third down and two. McKinnon runs the option, flag down, and Thompson goes out of bounds. I think he'll have a first down, but we'll have to see what that flag's about. The holding call 10 yards from the spot of the foul this year. So now Eastern Michigan looking at third and 12 for the Purdue 35. McKinnon drops, Komet has him around the ankles and he goes down. Kirkland on to kick. And he skies it over Callaway. It's in the end zone on the fly and Kirkland matted himself because he had an opportunity to put Purdue back in a hole. The Boilermakers offense comes out with 31 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Purdue on top 42 to 3. Ogorik has Jermaine Ross and Terry Samuel now wide to the left. And gives on first down. Connors is stopped after a gain of a yard. Kevin Janiak limped off. Elvin Caldwell back in at tackle. Tony Simmons, 88. The freshman tight end is in there. He's from Mandeville, Louisiana. O'Gorick gives on the misdirection, and Hill is stopped short of the line of scrimmage and thrown for a loss back inside his own 20. That is the end of the third quarter. The Boilermakers now will be looking at a third down and 10 as we start the fourth when we come back on the Purdue replay right after this. It's time. It's here. And it's coming your way now. With an all new power pack show, Rhythm of the World. This is the one show for everyone, everywhere in the world. A talented international cast live on stage. Up with people. Get your tickets now and get the beat. Visit our Sail Away Cruise Center and say, I want to cruise the world with Travel Agent Center National 
and you will receive $50 off any of our seven-day cruise cabins. Our Sailaway Center features knowledgeable, experienced, and friendly counselors. And with over 3,000 discounted cruises available, they will work with you to find just the right cruise at the best price. Come to our cruise center in West Lafayette Sagamore Park Center or call 463-5050 and say, I want to cruise the world with Travel Agents International. It's time to raise the roof and tell you about our low, low prices during the 1991 year-end closeout at Twin City Dodge. Take this snazzy little Dodge Shadow Convertible home and tell your wife you bought it just for her. With our closeout discount of $15.43 plus manufacturer's cash back of $2,000, you'll pay an incredibly low $12,195. You'll get the right car at the right price at Twin City Dodge. As we start the fourth quarter, O'Gorick sends Ross wide to the far side, Samuel to the near side, Hill and Connors are in the eye behind him, and Simmons is the tight end in the slot. And running on third down and long, the Boilermakers just trying to keep the clock going now. Brune stands back on his seven yard line. A 10 man rush coming from the Eagles. But Brune couldn't have thrown the ball any better. Thompson runs back and drops the ball at his own 25 yard line. Now he gets up the sideline and finally is run out on the 31 by Pat Johnson, the Boilermakers with O'Gorick, who uh, has been playing quarterback. He's also the long snapper on punch, got down there and hit Thompson back at the 25, but he slipped the tackle and got up past the 30. Six yards on the return, the line. McKinnon on first and 10 from his own 32. Went on the option. Minner fell on the ball, which McKinnon had stuck to the ground to try to hold himself up. But as soon as he touched the ground with the ball, he was down. Only three Purdue starters are in on defense right now. They're all in the secondary. The front seven is all new. McKinnon going to run it after the loss. And he is hit and hit hard coming up to pop him didn't get the number on him over there but uh, it was Ryan Wilson credited with the tackle the inside linebacker they're down six double wide outs left McKinnon throws, now tucks it under, and he is tripped up. Minner, I think, got a hand out, and Kwame McKinnon. Kwame McKinnon goes down inside his own 40. And now on fourth, we'll see if Jim Harkema elects to kick it away. Kirkland, low line drive. This is returnable by Callaway if he could get to the wall. Cuts up, makes the first two men miss but he's only able to get back to the 30-yard line. Samuel and Ross go wide to the far side. Green the tight end now on the near side. Rob Forrester and Lewis Smichael are in the eye behind George O'Gorick. Smichael the tailback, seeing his first action as a Boilermaker after transferring, and look at him run! Big game by Lewis Smichael, the sophomore from Farmingdale, New York. Bert Thornton brings in the play and flanks wide to the bottom of your screen. Purdue with a first and 10 at his own 46. O'Gorick on the option, and he had white shirts all over him. Didn't matter whether he handed to the fullback Forrester or not. The Boilers were going to be dumped for a loss regardless. Ross back in. Green in the slot. Forrester 
and he goes backward. He was down before the ball was picked up by Ron Rice. So it'll be third down now and about 17 for the Boilers. Call it third and 16 for O'Gorick and the Boilers. O'Gorick drops and throws, and the pass is caught, but short of the first down. Inside Eastern Michigan territory at the 49-yard line by Burt Thornton, the converted quarterback from Akron, Ohio. Bruden now with a good opportunity to try to kill it deep in Eagle territory. Wobbly kick. Thompson fumbles it right at the nine-yard line. So O'Gorick unable to move the offense, but Bruden coming up with a big punt. And the Eagles are bottled up with 9.44 to go. Three backs behind McKinnon. Gives to Moss. Moss runs past freshman Eric Gray at the line of scrimmage. Gray, a true freshman from Joliet, Illinois, number 75 in the defensive front for Purdue. Second down and a long six from the wishbone. McKinnon going to check off. No problem hearing him. Most of the students have gone home. Flag or whistles before the play. And it might have been the play clock had run down. An inadvertent whistle from the stands. They're going to let Eastern Michigan repeat the down. The Purdue band closest to the play. And they carry whistles, of course. There is a gain. It looks like enough for the first down by Cameron Moss, the sophomore from Detroit. First aid station, please. Back west. Report to the west. First aid station, please. McKinnon to throw again. John Sikora comes free, and McKinnon jukes him, but Eric Gray has him, and he gets away. Then he's hit by Ryan Wilson and finally dropped for a loss. Back to the 20. Second down nine. The Purdue safety's playing way back. Pass on the far sideline is complete to Moss. After Moss went out of bounds after a gain of six, the clock stopped with 7.57 to go in the game. Looking at a third down and four now. The Eagles have three wide outs. McKinnon dumps it, and the fullback Wallace drops the ball. Well, the Boilermakers can identify with that because that happened to them time and time again a year ago where a back or a receiver on a short dump pass would just drop the ball. Brad Horton now into punt for Eastern Michigan. And you can see right there why Monty Kirkland is normally the number one punter. That kick went less than 20 yards and was down at the Eastern Michigan 44. The Boilers lead it 42 to three with 7.43 to go. We'll be back to Ross Age Stadium right after this. Could you tell me his symptoms? Are you taking any medication? Have you taken your temperature? Uh-huh, well, can you walk on it? I think you need to see a doctor as soon as possible. Sure, I'd be happy to refer you. Why does Ask a Nurse think it's so important to put registered nurses on the phone? Because it's your health that's on the line. Hello, Ask a Nurse, may I help you? For health information or help finding a doctor, call Ask a Nurse, your source for health care answers. The Bluffs, Lafayette's distinctive apartment community. I chose this lovely one-bedroom, unfurnished apartment in order to have my things around me while enjoying the excellent features that come with it, especially the lovely kitchen and dining area. 
I enjoy an active lifestyle, and the Bluffs offer swimming, jogging, tennis, and year-round health spa facilities. Furnished apartments are available. It's like living in your own private park, south of downtown on 4th Street. Convenient to banks, Purdue, and shopping. Ogorek on first down, gives to Forrester, and he carries for a first down to the 32-yard line of Eastern Michigan. Rob Forrester, the Purdue fullback, a uh, insertion in the lineup here late in the game. From Concord, California. They give up the middle again. This is Smichael. He gains at least five inside the 25. Second down four. Ogorek gives to Forrester again, trying to get outside. And he falls ahead for the first down inside the 15-yard line. Tripped up by Kevin Tucson. Thornton goes wide to the far side, wide to the near side. It's Terry Samuel. A lot of running room to the right. Ogorek instead gives back to Forrester on the trap. He may score. He's just short. Rob Forrester went 14 yards down to the one. This is the number two Purdue line doing the job. First and goal. Ogorek to Smichael running wide. He can walk in. Lewis Smichael with his first Purdue touchdown. And the Boilers have scored 48. O'Leary on for the seventh time. Callaway had a little trouble with it, but O'Leary got it through nonetheless. 5.36 to go in the game. The Boilers have scored again, 49 to three. They lead it. Today's game, you're encouraged to follow the Purdue All-American Marching Band and the Engineering Ball. About four blocks southeast of the stadium. The Purdue Marching Band. Wagner ready to kick off. Purdue has amassed 344 yards on 65 plays. Good kick by Wagner, taken back at his own five-yard line, and returning it out to around the 25 was Pfeiffer. Johnson brought him out, and Kevin Strickland also back in the lineup after a year away from school, and an injury most of fall camp make the, making the stop. Strickland stays in on defense. Walker is also in, Roman Batten, Matt Kingsbury. Plenty of new faces on the Purdue defense and back in the game at quarterback, Shane Jackson for Eastern Michigan. Throws for a first down on his first play back in. Hitting it with Pfeiffer. Brian Thurman also in at free safety for Purdue. John Jackson in at a cornerback. Shane Jackson's pass goes right through the hands of the uh, intended receiver over there. Number 28, Stephen Whitfield. Jackson to throw again. Looks downfield, Pfeiffer. Had to reach for it, it was off target, and it falls incomplete. It'll make it third down now, and 10. Pfeiffer again goes wide to the far side with Tim Kellogg to the near. Jackson throws over the middle, and there was no one there. Kellogg had curled short. Jackson threw it deep. Fourth and 10, and the putting unit on again. 
now. Something must have happened to Monty Kirkland, a number one punter. Ten man rush for Purdue. Langlow, nice spiral. Floats down to Callaway at the 18. Right up the middle. It's out to the 32 yard line. Tackled on the play by the number 93 for the Eagles, Freddie McClendon. Jermaine Ross comes wide to the near side and Terry Samuel to the far side. Green the tight end left. And the Boilermakers using yet another ball carrier. 47 Mike Anderson a fullback makes the catch or makes the uh, carry and gains three out to the 33 yard line. Burt Thornton ran in the play. He splits wide right to the top. Ogorek's got to get it off. He does with the play clock at two. Smichael, who just scored Purdue's last touchdown, doesn't find any running room on the off-tackle slant. Maybe it was a sweep, but Smichael couldn't get inside. He couldn't get outside. And he is taken down for a loss of three back to the 30. Third down 10, three and a half minutes to go in the game, and the Boilermakers have put away an impressive opening win, keyed by the turnovers that the defense forced. Flags down, whistles. Did the Boilers take too long before they ran the play? The give was to Smichael, but the play was stopped before the snap. Delay of game makes it third down 15. We'll see if Ogorek puts it up. Nope. Instead, the give to Smichael. Running off the left side. He gains five back to the original line of scrimmage. And with 3.16 and the clock running, the punters will come on for Purdue. Brun stands inside his own 20. It's a way a wobbly kick that Waldron catches at his own 30. Waits for some white shirts to help him out. But the black shirts outnumber the whites quickly, and Waldron only picks up three yards on the return. So with 2.36 to go, this may be the last gaff for Eastern Michigan to try to get into the end zone. Purdue with an entire second unit in on defense now. The pass over the middle to Waldron is caught. And a first down in Purdue territory at the 48-yard line. Jackson still at quarterback. Lofts it over the middle, and it's intercepted again. The fifth turnover of the game. Roman Batten makes the interception. The Redshirt freshman from Bishop Gallagher High School in Detroit. And Purdue is back in business on offense with 2.16 to go. Well, the Boilermakers were awful last year in turnover margin. Right now they're a plus five. As they're getting ready to put in the first win of the Jim Coletto era in the books. A nasty hit as Smichael was popped at the line of scrimmage, making the play 56. Scott Emmons, a sophomore from Kenton, Ohio. Smichael and Forrester in the eye behind Ogorek. Nick Mamula snaps it. Ogorek hands off Smichael. Breaks it past the linebackers out to around the 44-yard line. They're down for Eastern Michigan by 27, Dave Marshall. Boilers have been keeping it on the ground here in the second half. 277 rushing yards, and there goes Smichael again. Cuts back behind a good block, nearly lost the ball. 
Jermaine Ross making the block, and Purdue is in Eastern Michigan territory at the 46-yard line. The clock restarts, 30 seconds to go. O'Gorick up the middle to Anderson. And that will be the last play of the game. As the Boilermakers, with the benefit of five turnovers, a touchdown by the defense, and a solid ground attack, have dominated Eastern Michigan in the opener here in 91. Next up for Purdue, it'll be the California Golden Bears, a tough test on the road. But Jim Coletto is 1-0 as a head coach at Purdue. He shakes the hand of Jim Harkema. Harkema's program struggling to get back to the level that it had enjoyed in just two and three years ago. But the Boilers are 1-0 in 91, and Eastern Michigan drops to 0-2. We'll be back to wrap it up from Ross Age Stadium right after this. This Boilermaker moment is brought to you by Lafayette Glass. Robert Allen Greasy, the only Purdue quarterback to take the Boilermakers to the Rose Bowl, was a two-time All-America selection in the mid-60s. The Evansville native was probably best remembered for his ability to get the ball to the right place when Purdue needed it the most. Bob's greatest day as a Boilermaker came in his junior year, 1965, against Notre Dame. In that game in West Lafayette, Bob connected on 19 of 22 passes for 283 yards, leading Purdue to a 25-21 upset of the top-ranked Fighting Irish. The following year, Bob led the Boilers to a 14-13 win over USC in the Rose Bowl and finished second in the voting for the Heisman Trophy. Then it was on to the NFL, and Bob played 14 seasons there with the Miami Dolphins. In Miami, he was one of the cornerstones of one of pro football's greatest dynasties in the early 70s. Find replacement doors, replacement windows, storm doors, storm windows, and window glass at Lafayette Glass. How about framed mirrors, wall mirrors, mirrored wardrobe doors, and bathroom mirrors at Lafayette Glass? And who has windshields, sunroofs, and vinyl tops for your car? Lafayette Glass has them. For skylights, storefronts, furniture tops, shower doors, and glass for any other purpose, think of Lafayette Glass. 2841 Teal Road, serving Greater Lafayette for over 45 years. The Boilers walk off triumphant as they beat Eastern Michigan 49 to three. Let's recap the scoring for you. Purdue scored on Eastern Michigan's first possession. Just over a minute into the game, Jim Schwantz, a 66 yard interception return of a tipped Kwame McKinnon pass, seven nothing Boilers. Then a long drive, seven plays, 84 yards. Eric Hunter, the last 27, and it was 14 nothing. Still in the first quarter, after an interception, a seven play drive, 35 yards, and Earl Coleman went in for his first touchdown. The Boilers led it 21-0. Eastern Michigan got a field goal right before halftime. And in the third quarter, with 534 left, an 80-yard, 15-play drive, all on the ground. Corey Rogers went in for the touchdown. After another turnover, an eight-yard run by Eric Hunter. A Tank Adams interception set it up, three plays, and 24 yards the drive. Hunter's second touchdown made it 35 to three. Then a fumble recovery, and Coleman scored again on another nine yard, three play drive. 42 nothing after O'Leary's kick. Joe O'Leary was seven for seven in point afters today. And then in the fourth quarter, Lewis Smichael went in with 536 to go. After a short Eastern Michigan punt, a 44-yard five-play drive, Joe, George O'Gorick coming in and relieving Eric Hunter at quarterback. The Boilermakers running for 289 yards on the ground, 72 through the air. Looking at the uh, individual rushing totals for the Boilers, very, very balanced. Forrester with 33, Hunter with 32. Connors, the leading rusher today, Arlie Connors with 68 yards on just seven carries. Coleman, nine carries, 30 yards. Michael, eight carries, 43 yards. Jeff Hill, nine carries for 59 yards. And Corey Rogers, the starting tailback, eight carries for 18 yards. 
but the Boilermakers with 72 total plays and 367 yards in offense and the five turnovers by the defense, the story of today's game. This is Paul Stouter. We'll see you in three weeks. No replay next Saturday night as the Boilermakers will be traveling to California. There will be highlights on the Jim Coletto Show next Sunday. And you can see the Coletto Show tomorrow at 10.30 here on TV 18. And for photographer Clayton Duffy, again, this is Paul Stouter. On Pork Day and Armed Forces Day, the opening win for Purdue at ross Aid Stadium, 49-3 over Eastern Michigan. And hope to see you back here on the 28th when the Boilermakers host Notre Dame. Nut Cheerios has the goodness of golden honey, crushed nuts, and hearty whole grain oats. We're out to tip to tell me. Crunchy nuts and honey. It's a honey of an O. Ow! It's honey nut Cheerios. Tag them right in their face. Right in their face. 28 hundred. Go, 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 go. The wheel is gonna get you tonight. Got the Wow! Where can you play trivia with Trebek? Right here on WLFI. It has to be almost psychic. <laughs> what am I thinking? <laughs> you give me your phone number right now, or you don't call back again. <laughs> Join the fun on TV 18. WLFI TV now concludes its telecast schedule for this day. Our studios are located at 2605 Jaeger Road in West Lafayette, with transmitter near Rossville, Indiana. WLFI TV and studio transmitter links WCZ 72 and KSI 69 are owned and operated by WLFI TV Incorporated, Post Office Box 7018, Lafayette, Indiana. 47903. We transmit on 494 to 500 megahertz with an effective radiated power of 1,490,000 watts visual and 298,000 watts oral. WLFI TV is a CBS television network affiliate. This is the seal of the National Association of Broadcasters. WLFI TV is a subscriber to the standards and practices of the National Association of Broadcasters. The display of this seal represents WLFI-TV's pledge of community service and the maintenance of high standards of broadcasting. The entire staff and management of WLFI-TV bid you a pleasant good night and a good morning.